Hey guys, my name is Charlie. Welcome to my channel and thanks for checking out the video. If you like what you see today, please like and subscribe and then I can hopefully get you guys some more content um, and help the channel grow. So let's get right to it. What we're doing today is putting some engine and transmission mounts on my 2019 RS3 and uh, I got Matt here to help me. Check out his channel too. I'll post uh, his name here and, and you can go give his channel a look. He's trying to get off the ground too. And uh, this is what we're focusing on today. All right, so here's what you're gonna get when you order the BFI or Black Forest Industries Stage 1 engine mount. Stage 1 has the black poly. Um, it's really for your daily driver if you're not planning on going to the track or you don't want excessive NVH. Uh, these are the ones you're gonna want. They will stiffen up the drivetrain a little bit, help you put a little more power to the ground um, and not be and uh, won't rattle your teeth out. So what you'll get, you'll get the hardware, which I've kind of labeled, I'll go over that in a second, and then you're gonna get the mounts uh, themselves. I basically labeled them um, T1, T2, E1, and E2. Uh, there should be four bolts that go from the trans mount to the frame, three bolts that go from the trans mount to the transmission, three bolts that go from the engine mount to the engine, and then two bolts that go from the engine mount to the frame. So I kind of did the T1s here, the T2s, and the E1s, and the E2s. And double just, uh, just double check that you have all your hardware. And then these are gonna be a little bit difficult to get to. Um, you're gonna have to remove any uh, intake you have. I have the AWE mount uh, intake, which I'm running open right now because it's winter time. I don't, I'm not worried about my intake air temperatures being too high. Um, we're gonna have to remove that. If you have the stock air box in here, it's really not too bad. It kind of just pops out and then you can disconnect uh, all the connections back to, probably you'll have to do it back to here. I don't remember how the stock one uh, is, is nestled in there, but uh, the mounts will be under here. And then on the passenger side, the mount is here. You have all your kind of coolant fuel lines here. We're probably gonna have to remove this tank. It was a little easier on my Mark 7. The last time I did engine mounts was on my Mark 7 GTI, and this was uh, pretty open. It was about a 30 minute job. So looks like we're gonna have to remove a little bit more here. So one of the things you're definitely gonna have to do is support the engine while you're replacing these mounts. You don't do them both at the same time. You'll do them one, uh, one at a time, and you're definitely gonna need something under uh, the engine to support it while you detach while you detach the engine mounts. Um, so we have, I'm gonna use this floor jack. Now I do have a low pro, uh, profile floor jack, but my buddy has it and I have this higher profile one. If you have, if you're stock ride height like I am and you have a low profile jack and you have a small piece of wood or a small rubber block, uh, you can use that. I'm probably gonna have to use the quick jacks just to lift the car up enough to get this underneath and support the engine. Um, so we're gonna do that right now.
four, you can get the jack under here and put it under the oil pan. You're going to want to take the rain, the rain tray off, splash guard off. There are seven T25 bolts and three T45 bolts. Um, and then once you remove all three of those, you can press on these little tabs here. And then here. And pop the whole thing out and set it aside. So while I'm under here, I'll mention that I already have the East Coast Euro or ECE dog bone mount in. Um, basically the BFI mount should uh, work with this really well, complement it pretty well. And uh, I do feel a little bit of MDH in the steering wheel and in the pedals uh, when I'm sitting at idle. And uh, it's nothing too serious, but this thing is absolutely awesome. It cleaned up a lot of the slop out of the drivetrain. Uh, helped immensely with shifting and putting power to the ground and the uh, BFI mounts are going to help even more. This is what I'll be using to um, put between the jack and the bottom of the engine. It's a uh, pretty hard rubber block that came with my quick jacks. Now if you have like a small piece of wood or something like that you can use that as well. Uh, you're not doing anything too drastic you're just using the jack to support the weight of the engine and uh, you can move it around a little bit. Uh, when you need to line the holes up and everything like that. So this is what I'm using, but you're definitely gonna to wanna to put something between uh, your jack and the bottom of the engine. All right, so you're definitely gonna to wanna to make sure you have enough room in front of the car so that you can uh, operate the jack handle. And then this is where we're gonna go for the driver's side mount or the transmission mount. I'm gonna put it right on the bottom of the casing right here. And just barely it, put a little tension on it, and that's really all you need. So we got the intake out. Um, this is the intake mount bracket, I guess you'd call it. There are two T27 Torx bolts. One's down in here, the other one's back here. And go ahead and pop that off. All right, so you're gonna need a 10 deep socket to get these two bolts off to remove um, the ECU bracket. Let's go ahead and pull the ECU out. You pull up on this, slide the ECU to the side, and then it can pop right out. Uh, this will have to come out. It is a 10 mil deep. Take this tab, get a pick under there, pop that off. How's this? Howdy, there's got to be a better way than these janky clips. All right, so move that. All we really need to be able to do is pull this up and out of the way. Yeah, Just a little bit. Attached in the back. How is it attached on there? Would you break? It's attached under here somewhere. Oh, I was talking about these same, those tens that hold that, that this thing on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it was attached to something back here. Okay. All right, so that tab was back in here. All right, so after messing with this wiring harness for a little bit, there's one of these Tab finicky little here. tabs back there. And right then there. one right down there. And there's gonna be two. Can you pull that up? Two of those right down there. And what we did was we just got a small pry bar and just got under there. They probably damaged them a little bit, but uh, nothing irreparable. And then a ton of stuff lies on that anyway, uh, your intake and your uh, intake mount and everything like that. So we were trying to be as gentle as possible, but we still might have ended up damaging the, the, those clips a little bit, but part of the territory. All right, so the sizes on these factory bolts, the ones that attach to the frame are 16 millimeter, and then these are 18 millimeter. Um, we're gonna break these loose first. We're gonna see how the engine responds 
we do have our support under there. And then if we need to um, add or release any tension, we can just do it with the, with the jack. But the jack stand is, uh, or the jack is supporting the transmission and we're gonna go ahead and start cracking these loose. See how that, just trying to feel how the tension's working on them. So, make sure that we have the jack under there in the right spot. So, I do still feel tension on this one and not on these two. So, I'm gonna go ahead and And if the bolts are scraping against anything or you feel any tension, you can drop the jack a little bit to alleviate that. And yep, there is still a ton of tension on that. So I'm gonna bring jack down just a bit. taking the tension off the bolt. There you go, so you can see it. All right, so I, what I did was I just pushed up on the jack a little bit. And so now this is fully supported. Remember, you do still have this mount on the side, the dog bone mount and the jack holding up. You still have three points of contact, so this really shouldn't go anywhere on you. And there it is. Listen to that. Yeah. So now we gotta get to these four 16s under here. And we're gonna go dig through the toolbox and see what we have for those. All right, so I threw the 16 on a wobble extension, uh, 3 8 inch drive. We're gonna see if we can get this off. If not, we're gonna use the Persuader. It does definitely help having someone to hold that harness for you. Sneaky reach around. You know what to do it. So that outside bolt, you can, if you really wrench up on this harness, you can get to from the back. Oh, there's a magnet. Uh, 
that thing right. Cause you got big gorilla hands. One. It's not the torque that's the problem, it's keeping it on the front. You pull this away. Yep. Did I break it loose? Mm -hmm. Oh. Is either that or the tool breaking? Oh, we didn't get the end. Keep pull that up. All right, yep, keep it up. Scratch free. Let's try this. There's plastic somewhere. These are gonna be fun to get it. Actually, these probably won't be too bad. I'll hold this. See the holes are already pretty well lined up. Um, Matt's gonna start hand tightening these. Hand threading these. But the jack looks like it's exactly where it needs to be to help us get these bolts back in. Good. Oh, this is a lifesaver right now. This warmed up like 25 degrees in here. One of the next projects for the garage is putting an electric heater up there, but this will do in the meantime. So there's my stock mounts. I'm not gonna lie, they're actually not too bad. A year and a half of them. Yeah, but it's got a lot more power than it did. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is more yep. Now that we have the driver's side uh, all buttoned up, the intake's back in. Uh, we're going to work on the passenger side, which is the engine mount. There's going to be two bolts right there that we have to take out. One here, and there's one all the way down at the bottom on the side of the block, which we're going to have to remove this wheel and then a part of the um, fender liner. And then there should be a rubber plug there, or there will be a rubber plug there that we can access that bolt through. So we're gonna get started on that. The front wheel is off. So we came in here and we undid, we removed this screw. 
this screw. Uh, they're all T25, by the way. Same thing that holds up the uh, the rain tray. This one, this one, this one, and two on the bottom. And I think that's as far up as we yeah. went. And then you can bend this back and see your panel. Okay. And there's your plug. And the plug's down on the floor. Right in there is the hole. Yeah, I dropped the plug on the floor. So before we can begin to remove these bolts or anything over here, just want to get the engine supported again. We used this point for the transmission side. Now I'm going to use, you can use any one of these spots. This is the oil pan, but if you have, um, like I said, a piece of wood or a soft rubber block, you shouldn't uh, damage anything. Just be care uh, careful of this sensor right here. Definitely don't want to put it on there. Um, but this is where you're gonna to want to support it. Right about here, here, or in the back of the pan. So a couple of things I want to point out. This reservoir is gonna to have to come out. It's connected to a plug here, and then two tabs back here that attach to the body. And then there is a 10 millimeter bolt that you're gonna to have to remove off the top of the engine mount here. And then there's one all the way down there. Um, which is actually on the top of the one uh, bolt that mounts to the frame of the car. So we're going to start working at all this, trying to clear the way. And then, like yeah, I said, that lower bolt from the reservoir yep. and pull the lines out. This tab, tab, this tab will come out, lift it straight up. One thing to note with clips like these, they are not anything um, like a release tab like this, or let me find another one on here, something like this that has a little tab you pull up and then push it's actually a little simpler than that if you take a screwdriver and you try to pry up on this and use that you'll probably break this I've, I've broken a fair share of these um, push down towards the reservoir tank just push back and then it should pop right off so push down just push in on that tab this way and then pop it right off and you won't break this. I know what it looks like. It looks like you should have to pull it up, but you'll you'll probably break it if you put too much pressure on it. So then we'll remove this to get these tabs out. You have a flathead, Matt? Yeah, my pocket. Okay. All right. So Matt's pulled up on that. This is still attached. Yep. So this. This coolant hose right here is attached with this 10 mil. So once you pull this off and this down here, which attaches to this bracket here, this whole line should be able to come up. Um, I have my fuel E85 uh, content sensor right here. We're gonna be careful not to um, mess that up or loosen any of the fittings, but it goes right into this bracket here. Um, your fuel line will be there too. So just be careful, try not to put too much pressure on anything and uh, once we move all this out of the way, we can start attacking some of these bolts. So we get that 10. Uh, one thing to note, if you guys have something like this, a magnet, it helps in tight spaces like this so you don't drop bolts into the engine bay, especially when it's hard to reach with your hands. as I drop it into the engine bay. Pretty handy tool, it's like five bucks. Go grab one. I'm gonna make that a tray too. If you don't have a couple of these lying around either, super handy. entire bracket should lift up and you should have room to access the mount so this bolt right here you're gonna need uh, a deep socket for and uh, to get over this uh, this threaded part right here so deep socket for that this one you can guys uh, you guys can probably get a regular socket in there and then you should have enough room to get a ratchet and extension to access these two 
on the side. And then this bolt, I'm gonna guess, is a 13. And let's find what size those are. 15, do I even have a deep? Standard will be able to break it. That should, that should be able to break it. Give that a try. Want oh. the breaker bar? Thanks, buddy. Get yourself a helper too. I need to add more coolant too. That reservoir looks low. All right, let's see, if I can break, let's see if I can break this. If it starts to slip, we'll have to do something else. Nope. All right, so that loosened right up. So if you don't have a deep 16, you can use a deep 5 8 standard socket. But on the back one, I'm definitely going to use the right size. Five eighths. Let's try a 16. Yeah, like a little more. So it's not a 16. So this back bolt here is a 15 millimeter and I'm assuming that's what this one is too. But like I said, get a deep socket to get over this. So there's a broken loose. And then let's see what these will be. What's that? No, I just want to, I just want to break these engine ones first. There's a lot of play in that, so it might be 14. All right. And these two side bolts here, and I'm assuming that last one down there, are gonna be a 16 mil. And yeah, you don't need a deep one for those. This one right here attaching it to the body is going to be a 13 mil. It seems like it has a fair amount of tension on it. There we go. 
Now this bolt right here is not torqued to yield or a, a stretch bolt. So you will be reusing this one. So don't throw it away and keep it handy. That in the goodie bin. Keep the weight evenly distributed. sitting on the frame. I just wanted to make sure it was coming up and relieving the pressure before I took everything. Yeah, so you don't strip the threads or do anything like that. That's the last thing you guys want to do is end up uh, stripping some threads or damaging the frame. So figure out how the weight is distributed and how the engine's behaving based on uh, where your support is. And then um, just talk to whoever you're with and make sure um, you walk it in the right direction. So now we're gonna go down and tackle that guy all the way down there which we got to or where we're going to access from the wheel well gonna catch the bottom lip. We should get this one threaded first. Because it'll be the hardest to it'll be the hardest to alright so now you alright I'm yep so you got yeah give, give me a little more Jackie going up or down <clears throat> Right there. All right, so there's gonna be a lot of tension on this side bolt, so just um, use the jack to help you line that hole up so you can get it, uh, get it out without damaging the threads. Still good? Last two out of here. This is 16. Alright, so that just moved a bit. Yeah, which makes me wonder if we should move the block towards the bat, like. I can, I gotta take the jack out though. Both, I was backing both of them out. Tell me if it does anything weird. Uh, 
All right, so we're just moving this back on the oil pan here. I think it'll make it a little easier for everything to line up. Okay. Tell me if it, tell me if it tightens up or loosens when I jack it up. Sometimes you can't feel like you just got to play around with it a little bit. I suggest we get the ones on the block threaded first and then we can see how these ones are lining up and go from there. But leave them loose for sure, for sure. Bottom one first. Is that a good idea? I mean, that's bottom one first. I have some good ideas sometimes. I got zip ties. I could zip tie it real quick. So here is the old mount. Pretty good amount of movement in that. Here's the brand new BFI mount. One thing to note on the part that attaches to the frame, you have this little extension here. So both of your, what I labeled E2 bolts, engine mount to frame. One of them is gonna be a little longer than the other one. So the longer one goes here. And the shorter one in there. You should have the same amount of threads on the bottom. bottom has a little extent like a little bevel on it like this just got to make sure that's lined up and going into the block what's that that's fine let me get my hands in there you with your gorilla hands So what we're doing is we're gonna get the ones that go into the, the side of the engine, just hand tight first. Those will be probably the hardest to line up. And then we'll utilize the jack to line these up. We're gonna need the jack for the backup. Yep, yeah, we're gonna need the, but we'll get these started at least. Yeah, it is. But if you get these threads lined up, it should pull it in. See what I mean? Look, there's a bev there's a bevel on the edge of it. The bolt retrieval team nailed it. With an impact, you'll just ugga dug it in. I know. That's why your differential explodes. <laughs> I'm all about it. Angle. 
Oh, oh, wait, wait, what? what? Try it again. Keep trying it. Harder. Okay. Here, I guess. It's not moving. Hold on. You got it? This one's still not lined up, you dingus. Yeah, but they're straight, but they're equally not lined up. So we just gotta bring the whole thing this way. Short, oh yeah, short one. Short one in the back, and then the extended one in the front. Where's the extended one? Get the handy dandy torque wrench. All right, so per Black Forest Industries, engine is 35 foot pounds for both frame and engine side. So I'm gonna set the torque wrench to 35 foot pounds. We're gonna tighten the ones to the frame first, and then we're gonna tighten the ones to the engine and put everything back together. These things. Sometimes you gotta get creative or janky, whatever, to get in there and clear the caliper and the fender. So hopefully you guys have a decent torque wrench and a long enough extension or just get in there. These are getting torqued down to 35 foot pounds. It's not gonna feel like a lot, but um, it should be tight enough. You, you, you don't need to torque these I guess that's down. to the back up I had Matt started up and we're just checking in here to make sure there's no abnormal noises or movement and everything sounds pretty good so um, I do plan on doing a, uh, a driving video and letting you guys know uh, what I think about the mounts being in there, what I noticed as far as NVH, um, it's noise, vibration, and harshness for those of you who don't know. Um, and then giving you an overall impression, but it gets dark early here this time of year. So uh, it'd be kind of useless if I just had the camera in a dark car driving around. So I'm gonna wait till it's light out and then let you guys know what I think. And yeah, that's about it. So make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, I can get you guys more content. I have a lot of things planned. Um, a few of the things I want to get to are all the modifications that are done to the car, um, front to back. A couple of people have uh, displayed some interest in knowing about what I did to uh, get the garage the way it is, why I chose the flooring I did, the paint, the cabinets, everything like that. So I will make a video concerning that. So hopefully it'll help people out who uh, might be planning on making their garage a little bit of a nicer place to be. Um, I do spend a lot of time in here. Matt spends a really good amount of time in here too. And uh, we just, I want to make it as nice as possible and uh, a place that's uh, nice and clean, easy to work on the cars and then well equipped. So um, check back to the channel. I'm definitely going to pump out more content, but if you guys have any questions about uh, the installation of the motor mounts, hopefully that helped you guys. Hopefully I was thorough enough in uh, giving you guys all the specs, all the tips and tricks. Uh, to make this as easy as possible. Don't feel intimidated uh, doing it uh, by yourself or with a friend. It's um, pretty straightforward. 
and there's other good information out there. And that We're pretty popular. So, um, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.